Eminem's dropped from lawsuit accusing of harassing husband sex assault victim, the rapper paid over $300,000 to defend herself and plans to fight to recover the legal fees, her attorney said. Rapper Nicki Minaj has been dropped from the lawsuit alleging that she harassed and intimidated her husband's sexual assault victim, according to the court documents. The motion was filed Wednesday in the U.S. Court District of Eastern New York. The case against Nicki was voluntarily dismissed, said Tyrone Blackburn, the attorney for the accuser. The case against Kenneth Petty is still ongoing. Stay tuned. The accuser publicly identified herself as Jennifer Hugh. She alleged in the lawsuit that Nikki and Petty, Minaj's husband, tried to force her to recant her allegation of a of an assault that she said happened more than two decades ago. The suit also alleges that Minaj went so far as to bribe you. Attorneys for Minaj and Petty filed a separate court response saying the allegations were false. After the dismissal, Minaj's attorney accused Hughes' attorney in an email of going after Minaj because of her celebrity status. As I told you during your one virtual meeting, Nikki would never pay a dime to your client. I was correct. You ultimately were forced to surrender without you or your client receiving a penny. Jude Bernstein, Minaj's attorney, wrote in an email obtained by NBC News. Bernstein said Minaj, whose real name is Onika Tanya Mirage, paid over $300,000 to defend herself in the case and plans to fight to recover legal fees. Hughes' attorney said in response, Mrs. Mirage would be foolish to file sanctions against Mrs. Hughes. Hughes sued in August. Blackburn said she decided to come forward because Minaj and Petty came after her. What they did to me and my family wasn't okay. It wasn't right, you said in an interview in September on daytime talk show The Real. And it doesn't matter how much money you have, it doesn't matter what your status is, you can't intimidate people to make things go better for yourself, she said. She also discussed the allegations, saying in the interview, in the lawsuit, Petty assaulted her in September of 1994 as she was on her way to school in New York. Petty accepted a plea deal and was convicted of first-degree attempted assault. He served nearly four years in a state prison. This video is actually motivated by Deja Johnson. So, long story dull, some time ago, Deja Johnson hit up my YouTube comments section and she was basically asking why I wasn't updating on this story, right? She goes, I know you've been busy, but just wanted to come back and update that they had court today in like 45 minutes ago, Tyrone openly admitted to the judge that showed that he knew that Kenneth was not properly served. So she was hitting me up for updates. Actually, here it goes right here. Why haven't you covered the new updates of this case? And then I said, look, I've been busy. I've not produced any content for about a month or so. Fill me in on what happened, right? You know, so basically there was a a about a month or so and some change i was so busy i wasn't able to really generate any content on my youtube channel and i'm really still super busy now but i wanted to come back and just kind of cover some of this Nicki minaj kind of petty jennifer hughes saga and basically to just give you guys some up updates and i just want to say up front that I was clearly off on this whole thing. You know what they say, when you when you keep the same energy, right? Keep the same energy that you came in with when you were accusing Nicki Minaj, keep that same energy when you turn out to be wrong. So I'm just gonna clearly gonna say clearly say that I was off on this. And in and, and some points I was basically clearly wrong. I think the whole thing that basically threw me off was the fact that Nicki Minaj and Kenneth Petty were not properly served. I was thinking that the process server would have had integrity and the guy just basically came in with some bullshit talking about I saw some figure in the window and I knew it was Kenneth. That's not properly serving anybody. So I was definitely wrong about that. I'm still going to stick to my guns just a little bit, just a little bit, because I think Nicki Minaj did kind of keep this thing going in the media and she says some things that she probably shouldn't have but once it's all said and done ultimately i was wrong keep the same energy i'm admitting that i was wrong so now at this point the only thing left in this video is to basically cover the updates and basically try to wrap this whole thing up 
maybe I'll break this video up in a couple of parts. Let's see how fast I can get through all the updates. Uh, again, shout out to Deja Johnson. So at first we have this um, motion to dismiss and also an order for Nicki Minaj, basically pursuant to rule 41A1A1I, the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, plaintiff Jennifer Hugh and her counsel hereby gives notice that the plaintiff voluntarily dismisses her claim against Onika Tanya Mirage without prejudice, right? You know, so the case against Nicki Minaj is dropped, right? You know, so obviously I must have been wrong because at this point Tyrone Blackburn don't even really feel that he has a case against Nicki Minaj, so he's dropping the case. So at that point, I guess you can just say it was all BS, right? I still don't like how on the internet Nicki Minaj said some things. I, I felt that she shouldn't have said what she said, but whatever. The case against her is dropped. It's over. Next up, we have this letter, and we're going to go through this letter, right? And it goes, Michael Sinizic and the undersigned are currently co-counsel for the plaintiff, Jennifer Hugh, in the above action pursuant to F2 of your honor's individual practice. We submit this letter in motion to withdraw as counsel for plaintiff so already it looks like lawyers are basically jumping ship on the jennifer hugh case and typically in my own personal opinion they probably just say that there's no money there there's nothing to be gained it's a losing case they're pulling out and it goes on we submit that our firm presents satisfactory reasons for withdrawal under local civil rule 1.4 the general basis of this motion is that the withdrawal is appropriate based on the new york rules of professional uh, conduct, I believe, professional CON rule 1.16, blah, 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 blah. The firm notes that the presence of the two attorneys, co-counsel Tyrone Blackburns and Steve Gordon, and their respective firms remain as counsel on this case, both Miss, uh, Mrs., I'm sorry, that's a Mrs., uh, no, it's uh, Michael Snizek, uh, Michael Snizek, the undersigned, have recently filed notices of appearances uh, for Hugh in late November and early December 2021. Neither Michael Snizek nor the undersigned have filed any motions or pleadings in this matter. Hugh will not be prejudiced as she remains respective by represented by two separate firms at this time. This case is in the early stages with the fully brief motions related to, to clerk and judicial default pending court before the court. The firm also notes that the dismissal of one of the parties in this case, Onika Tanya Mirage, in addition, we note that the client, Jennifer Yu, has provided written consent to our firm withdrawing from the action. Then it goes on. We request the court allow us to file a motion to file our motion to withdraw and the company declaration and memorandum of law under the seal in camera review and the consideration with the copy served on the defendants, but not any other parties in order to preserve the confidentiality of the attorney-client relationship. And then it goes on, granting motion to withdraw upon the camera review, explaining documents in support of the motions to withdraw. I don't even think I really need to read the rest of this because basically it's just some of the lawyers drop, uh, jumping ship on Jennifer Hughes' team. Again, they see that there's nothing there. There's nothing to be gained. And they don't even believe that, in my own personal opinion, I interpret this as they don't believe that there's actually a case, hence no profit. It's time to bounce, right? You know, so it's not looking good for Jennifer Hugh. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, they dropped the case against Nicki Minaj without prejudice. And that typically means that you, they want the option of bringing the case back up against Nicki. But I don't see that happening right now. As of right now, uh, Jennifer Hugh is actually losing soldiers, right? And then we also have, what is this that we have here? We have another letter, right? And then it goes on, uh, reply you, B. Mirage Petty. Dear Judge uh, Vitaliano, I am counsel to Onika uh, Tanya Mirage in this matter, or N Nikki Mirage, in this matter pursuant to Section 3B of Your Honor's individual motion practice and rules. I write to request that Your Honor set a briefing schedule for sanctions, right? Sanctions motion intended to file against the plaintiff, Jennifer Hugh. So this is basically... It looks like uh, it's, it's plain and simple. They're, they're like, look, we didn't spend three hundred thousand dollars on this shit. We want our money back, right? You know, we want to we want to recruit. The only problem with this, in my own personal opinion, you guys let me know what you think. Jennifer, you ain't got no goddamn three hundred thousand. 
And that's my own personal opinion. She's basically right on probably contingency, a, a contingency plan. I think that's what it, what they call it. Whereas uh, you hire a lawyer and you don't actually pay the lawyer. The only way the lawyer gets paid is if you actually win the case, right? You know, so Jennifer, you ain't got no goddamn three hundred thousand dollars. But let's see what this letter says. As explained below, I have been unable to secure the plaintiff counsel's agreement to a reasonable schedule. Accordingly, I asked the court to set the following schedule. Mrs. Mirage will serve her motion on January 26th. Plaintiff and her counsel will serve their answers to the motion on February 9th. Mrs. Mirage will serve her reply and file a bundled motion papers on February 25th. By way of back out, or by way of background, I serve an extremely detailed Rule 11 motion demanding withdrawal of the amended complaint and plaintiff, plaintiff's pending motion for default judgment on January 9th. Three days later, plaintiff voluntarily dismissed amended complaint against Mrs. Mirage without prejudice. Plaintiff and her counsel's dismiss of the amended complaint permitted them to escape the Rule 11 sanctions sought in Mrs. Mirage's January 9th. Uh, 2022 motion. However, more than 21 days has passed since I have served other sanctions motions in effort to put an end to what was an entirely frivolous case. Moreover, I have made clear to opposing counsel that I was going to seek sanctions under both 28 U.S.C. 1927 and the court's inherent power based on some of the issues, right? And then it goes, identifying in my January 9, 2020, uh, 2022 sanctions motions included counsel's inexcusable and wholly unsupported accusations against Mrs. Murad, such as that she ordered someone to kill the plaintiff and that she is a member of a notorious street gang. Immediately upon learning that the case against Mrs. Mirage had been dismissed, I wrote to counsel informing them that I would be moving forward with the sanctions motions about which I had written them and proposed a briefing schedule as I was unable to find a schedule agreement to all of them. I stated that I would not let them know when the motion was completed. I'm sorry. I stated that I would let them know when the motion was completed. At the time, I could again seek to agree upon a schedule. I then learned today during an oral argument on the plaintiff's motion for a default judgment against the client's husband, plaintiff counsel stated that they had dismissed the amended complaint against my client solely because they had concluded that the court lacked personal jurisdiction, a fact which I assert months ago as a basis for the Rule 11 sanctions, and that they were planning to refile against uh, Mrs. Mirage, uh-oh, in another jurisdiction, while the plaintiff dismissed of her amended complaint does not moot my client's right to seek sanctions. It is clear to me that the plaintiff's counsel intend to interpose that new sanction, which also, which which will also be sanctionable as a frivolous defense to sanctions motions in court. So this is interesting. So according to what he's saying here, is that they're basically dismissing their case against Nicki Minaj because they don't have personal jurisdiction, which basically means Nikki hasn't been served. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. We're early in the updates. I actually think that they need to just go ahead and let this thing go unless they have something really solid on Nikki. That's not the reason that they're dismissing this case. You guys need to understand that they're dismissing the case against Nikki because they're saying she wasn't properly served versus dismissing the case against Nikki because they don't believe they have anything on her. It's, it, you know, it's kind of tricky and it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. What do you guys think? Do you think they should continue this case against Nikki Minaj? Me personally, seeing how this case is going, seeing the lies, seeing the deceit, I honestly think they should just let it go because they're already coming after them for sanctions. And me personally, I don't think Jennifer Yu has any goddamn money, at least no $300,000 for those sanctions. I would say something appropriate probably for Jennifer Yu. I don't know her income. I don't know her salary. But something reasonable against the average Joe Blow would probably be something like $10,000. $10, Unfortunately, Nikki had to basically waste her money on all this. What do you guys think? Do you think they should hit Jennifer Yu with $300,000 in sanction? Or do you think they should bring it down to something reasonable like $10,000? And what do you think about Nikki Minaj having to spend her money on this case 
to basically defend herself against some bullshit, right? And then it goes on. According, accordingly, in effort to avoid additional motions practice over yet another frivolous claim, I wrote to the plaintiff's counsel and proposed the same briefing schedule set forth above, except I shortened the time for Mirage's reply papers. I received the following response. First, Mr. Blackburn asked me to delay my initial filing until March when I agreed to do so. If he agreed that he would not file a new action against Mrs. Raj in the interim, he refused to respond to my proposal and instead stated only that March filing date would be preferable because it works best for his schedule. Second, Gordon refused to engage in stating that he would not concede to being harassed nor attempts at intimidation and would not respond only if I first sent the letter sent a letter to the court. Third, Mrs. Uh, uh, Fainza refused to discuss a scheduling with me be, uh, based on her erroneous belief uh, that she may not be sanctioned because the court permitted her to withdraw as counselor, albeit without information the court that I told her in writing that I intended to seek sanctions against her. As a hat, damn, so they actually trying to sanction the, the actual lawyers. So hold on a second. So maybe they can recover this money because it looks like, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong, it looks like they're not really just going after Jennifer Yu. They're probably going to go after the lawyers that filed this because the lawyer is actually responsible for filing the complaints, right? Both parties, like the lawyer is responsible and the actual plaintiff is responsible or the defendant because there's two aspects number one a lawyer has a responsibility for not filing bullshit i'm just gonna sum it up that way and then the 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 plaintiff or the defendant the person in the actual case has the responsibility of actually telling the truth so it looks like they're going after both the lawyers and jennifer you and if they basically pursue that way Maybe they can get $300 or more. Who knows? You guys let me know what you think about that. Anyway, it goes on. As I have tried to make clear to the opposing counsel, I do not dispute their right to argue that they are immune from sanctions by reason of their dismissal of the minute complaint against Mrs. Mirage and in this case of Mrs. Uh, uh, Faye. I can't even pronounce this, pronounce this woman's name. Faye Her withdrawal as counsel I have also made clear. And then it goes on that they certainly have a right to seek sanctions against me if they believe that my motion is frivolous or as mr gordon contends i have somehow improperly harassed and attempted to intimidate him but those rights do not excuse them from responding to a motion which is uh which the law permits my client to file so it looks like they're just basically trying to tie you know uh, tie them up in court not responding and basically playing games